What's going on, everybody? My name is Lucas, and we are back for episode 4 of my self-imposed challenge to play through every game in my over 1,000 game Steam library, rating each game as I go on how much I think they're actually worth playing or coming back to. We've got a lot of games to get through today, so let's start off with one that I should have played over 10 years ago. Alice Madness Returns. This is a fantastic action-adventure platformer that's nice to look at with fun and interesting worlds and mechanics. It's a twist on Alice in Wonderland, except here Wonderland is corrupted and Alice is a badass goth girl. This is something high school me would have spent hours playing while listening to the Black Parade or something like that. I love the aesthetic they went with for Alice. When you're low on health, you enter Hysteria mode, where you deal more damage and enemies can't hurt you, but it also makes Alice turn white with darkness pouring from her eyes, and it just looks so awesome. This game has a lot of collectibles, and I love collectibles, so this pleases me. There are little bits of jank here and there, but the game is good enough for me to overlook that. For example, the combat features a lock-on function, which locks both the camera and your attacks to an enemy. I think the camera gets a bit too locked on, which makes seeing what other enemies are doing somewhat difficult, and that's annoying, but not too annoying for me to get really frustrated. Alice Madness Returns is really fun, and this is definitely one game I will be coming back to finish. 8 out of 10. The only reason I stopped playing when I did was because the game unexpectedly crashed. Which I'm not sure if it was the game's fault or something else I was doing, so. Moving on, we've got Amanda the Adventurer. This one I got through my Humble Choice subscription, so I didn't really pick it out specifically. It's a horror mystery puzzle game that evokes nostalgia for those of us who were kids in the 90s and early 2000s. It seems like it relies pretty heavily on shocking Corruption of Innocent Things style horror, and I don't know, it just felt kind of distasteful to me. That's right! The tree stump is dead. Dead is the opposite of alive. Good job! I did appreciate the effort that clearly went into this game, especially the live action cutscenes and the sound design. And I will say, they did a good job on the VHS effects and the mimicry of the weird low budget 3D animation of the period. The puzzles, which are the main thing this game has going for it, were decent, if somewhat simple. It took me 2.3 hours to get all 19 achievements, if that tells you anything. They're apparently making a second one, and I can see it having an audience that would be very into it, but this sort of thing just isn't for me. 3.5 out of 10. It's me, your friend, Skip, and with me as always is my trusty dog, Chip. And our cute is next, and it's a bit less cute than you'd expect with a title like that. It's a game along the lines of Pikmin, in that you control a mob of tiny creatures that you direct to complete objectives. However, it's more combat focused, and there's no time limit. It has really, really repetitive music that can be kind of off-putting after a while. The chibi characters are indeed cute, but the camera is so far away you don't fully get to appreciate how adorable they are during gameplay. It's decently fun, and it has some simple but entertaining puzzles and power-ups. I think it's a fine game, but not something I'm dying to complete. I'd give it a decent 6.5 out of 10. It's fun enough. Following that, we've got Alt Frequencies, a game about free will and politics with some really unique gameplay. This game had an interesting premise. You play as a radio listener in a time loop who is immune to the time loop, trying to change events by informing people about things. You do this by recording parts of live broadcasts and sending them to other live broadcasts. It's a very unique game mechanic that I would like to see implemented in a more in-depth game, because as it stands, this game lacked a bit in terms of how much content it had to offer. The game does have a few choices to make, and it has two different endings, but it's mostly linear after you've listened to all of a chapter's broadcasts. They're just isn't as much variability as I would have liked to have seen from a game of this style. It does make a few good points about politics, the world around us, and some of the ways people handle things, but I think it just needed... more. I'd like to replay this one making the few alternative choices to the ones that I made in my first playthrough, and luckily that won't be much of a chore because the game is only around 3 hours long, with a second playthrough likely being much quicker. I'll give this one another 6.5 out of 10. Not bad just needs more. Speaking of time loops, let's talk about 5D Chess with Multiverse Time Travel. 
This is a super interesting chess variant. It plays out like a regular chess game, except each move creates a new board on a timeline. Pieces can travel back in time to previous boards, which creates a branching timeline. There are rules that determine which timelines are active and which are currently not, meaning sometimes it's in your best interest to split the timelines to deactivate a timeline in which you're losing and activate one where you have the advantage. The goal of the game, as usual, is to get a checkmate on one of your opponent's kings in any timeline. You can, of course, move a piece from one timeline to another. For instance, here, I can move my king from this timeline to another, keeping him from ever being able to be in check in one timeline, but giving my opponent twice as many targets in another. Sometimes you'll feel like you're in a hopeless situation, but you can jump timelines into a checkmate and very suddenly win the game. I did notice that the more timelines were created, the slower the computer processed its next move, and the game performed significantly better on my desktop than it did on my laptop. It seems that sometimes keeping the timelines more condensed can be your best route to victory, but sometimes games can drag on for a very long time. This game is fun and fascinating. I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. Up next we've got Anime Tanks Arena, and what more do I need to say? I got all the achievements in 6 minutes. Game of the Year, 2 out of 10, moving on. And next we've got Antenna, which is also incredibly short at just around 10 minutes or so. This is a decent little experience with some nice sounds and visuals. You're just a robot fixing some radio signals and antennas in the form of some very small puzzles. It's not bad. It also doesn't do too much. It would have been really cool to see a full-fledged game that was maybe a few hours long, but it was free so I can't complain too much. I'll give it a 5 out of 10. This feels more like a proof of concept than anything else. Next up is Ancestor's Legacy, a fantastic real-time strategy game with some interesting mechanics and a fast-paced, up-close and personal feel. And when I say up-close, I mean you can really get up-close to the action by pressing the Z key, which enables cinematic camera mode, making battles way more fun to watch. It even makes it enjoyable just to watch your troops run around the map. Unlike in a lot of RTS games, you're not going to be too focused on base building in this one, since all the buildings have preset locations. Ancestor's Legacy is focused on action, and does a great job of making your units feel less disposable than in other RTS games. When you train a squad in this game, they don't share a unified health bar, but rather each man in the squad has their own health and can die individually. There are mechanics that let you rest to heal damaged units and train new men to replace those who died in battle making it easier to keep a unit around in the long term. In addition to that, you can upgrade your unit's armor. However, this comes at the cost of speed, which is pretty realistic. I also like that the characters have context-based responses to your move commands, unlike in Age of Empires where the units just repeat random nonsense phrases like like that. Ancestor's Legacy also has excellent mission variety. In the time that I played it, I never felt like I was doing the same thing over and over again. Early on, there's a stealth mission that teaches you about the game's really well-implemented stealth mechanics. This makes ambushes a much more viable tactic, as well as something to watch out for when moving into enemy territory. That being said, the game plays very well and each unit feels unique enough to be useful. Archers, in particular, felt great to use. Archers! I'm using a red arrow so I know who I kill! I love that the game focuses on Vikings, since not many RTS games do. Though, there are nine full historical campaigns in the game set across a variety of cultures. I haven't gotten to those yet, but I do look forward to playing them. This game is great, and I'm giving it another 8.5 out of 10. And that's another 8 games marked off the backlog. We're making steady progress here. Let me know what you thought about these games. And if you haven't seen the other videos in the series, you can click on this playlist here or in the description to check them out. And if you want to stick around for the rest of the series and a bunch of other video game stuff, why not give this channel a sub? Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and have an amazing day. See you in the next one.